Hello everyone. So today I'm going to do something that is a very simple process, but some people may not know and you may have questions and you may want to be able to do it the right way. So I'm going to explain that. Today I'm going to change the strings on my five string Ibanez. I've owned this thing for quite a number of years and I'm a terrible bassist, not in the sense of I'm a bad musician, but just I'm terrible with the maintenance on it because these strings are older than dirt and uh, Glenn Fricker would light me on fire for this. Look at this, if you can see it. I don't know if I can. All right, I don't know if you see all that. That's, you know. That's, I've been asked before, is that fur? Is that fur growing on your strings, dude? No, that's that's not fur. What that is is that's the elixir coating that was on the strings originally. And over time, it just starts to wear off and it flakes off. And it, you know, it doesn't look pleasant. But elixir strings last a long time compared to non-coated strings. And I've just been exceptionally lazy. And today, I'm going to solve that. I'm going to fix that. I'm going to change the strings on here. And I wanted to show you how I was going to do that. So I'm going to actually change them with these bad boys that I have not heard before on a bass, to my knowledge. I've never played DR strings on a bass. I love them on guitar, but um, I don't know what gauge are on these, but I think they're pretty heavy. And these are 45 to 125. You can see that. So I'm going to see how these turn out. And, but really, I'm going to show you how to change the bass strings. It's a really easy process, but like I said, some people who are new to the instrument or new to actually changing their own strings might have a lot of questions. So I'm just going to try to show you how to do this the proper way. And without further ado, here we go. All right, so here we are. We are going to change the strings on this now. We're going to get rid of these fur babies here, and we're going to put on the black beauties. So, you can do a couple of things. One good thing to have is a string winder, of course. Makes things a lot easier. And the good thing about them is, you know, they're small for guitar, but then they also have this notch, this little notch right here that perfectly fits in bass string pegged, like so. So, you also have that and then this one is that it's a multi-tool and uh, i'm sure you can find them probably anywhere online this has a couple of different kind of uh let's see the cutaway in that so you can you know it has a couple of different options there it also has these cat claw trimmers if uh if you have cats and you in these uh pair of something like this you can probably cut the string but I'm not sure how they really would work on bass strings. You can also use a heavier duty tool to cut the strings with if you really want to. And sometimes if you can get away with it, you could just try to slide the string through. But I'll go through and I'll show you that. Another thing you're gonna wanna have is a tuner. Tuner is very important. And you can take all the strings off. Um, you know, typically, you know, when you don't have a locking bridge, you could take all the strings off at once, but usually I like to just change them one at a time. Uh, that way you relieve the tension on the neck. You don't put, it's kind of like when, you know, they take your braces off, they cut the wire. I mean, I don't know how they do them now, but back when I had braces, they cut the wire and then all of a sudden you feel that horrible uh, tension in your teeth when all that pressure from the, the wire is just, it goes away Mostly. and just bam your, then your teeth immediately hurt and then you put the you know then you, they put the thing back in and <clears throat> it takes a while to readjust everything um, your neck has a lot of tension on it because the strings these are you know bass strings have a lot of tension on them and this is a long neck solid piece of wood so there is a truss rod in it but 
you're putting a lot of tension on it with the strings and then you're relieving a lot of tension immediately if you just change them all at once and over the long term i mean it probably really won't affect anything but just i just usually like to change it one at a time because i don't like just relieving that much pressure all at once so i usually change it one at a time so i'm actually going to go ahead and plug my tuner in and i have two different tuners here One is a trusty Seiko tuner. And a chromatic tuner. And the other one, I have this <clears throat> Chromacast headstock tuner. This thing, you know, is pretty great too. Because you don't have to plug it in. You just literally put it on the headstock and... And then it, you know, but you, you get the deal. So, so I'm going to leave that on there too. <clears throat> All right. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the smallest string first. And it's a little more of a pain in the ass when you're using something that's not specifically for bass, but I mean, like, again, it serves its purpose. Like this guy. This is a little bit better, actually, because it actually fits in there. So, yay for this. This is uh, pretty good. So, I'll actually use that instead. <laughs> and since that just slides right through, and I don't know if you can see that very well, but. I'll get a uh, better camera angle. Since this just sits there, this is kind of nice. Uh, just, that's it. It just literally tucks under and fits in. So most of them, most bridges go straight through, but this one on here just, Ibanez, you know, on this model was really thinking ahead. So that's one. I'll go ahead and open these up. As it says, first string. I'm going to change that one first anyway. Oh wow. And these are actually a lot, they seem like a lot lighter gauge. If you see the comparison. I don't know if you can see that well. funny thing I want to point out too is if you look you can actually see where the frets have worn um, a pattern into the string in like so just that's it pretty crazy cut and dry and what I generally like to do is I like to actually have um, about two frets worth of string slack while I tighten the strings so I'm gonna do this Just gonna simply put this there's a hole right in the middle here in the middle of this peg I don't know if you can see so right down in the center there's actually a little hole and you just simply put the string right into that just right in so what it looks like. Now, this is going to give me a lot more than I need 
So I probably am going to have to cut the end of this off because what I really need is about, like I said, two frets worth. So really, I can cut the end of that off. Let's see how this works. These will work because it's a smaller string. We start getting into the bigger strings. Um, and may, we may need a little heavier duty uh, cutters. Alright, so shed some light on that. Now it pinch down and then you're gonna pull if I ever figure out what way I'm doing this right. And you're going to loop the string underneath. So where this goes and where this sticks out, you always want to go underneath. Underneath where the old string, or, or underneath where the string is. All right, so just so we can get a close-up on that, when I was explaining about going under the string, if you can see that at all where... It's going through the top of the hole here. It's going through the top of the hole here and coming around. And winding down. And basically what I was saying is just see how there's layers of the string. So you just want the top layer. And then every time you wind the string through, you want it to come below the string that's in the peg. And the bottom result will be this right here, which should be your lowest point. You don't ever want to have it where your your string coming out is going to be in between. You don't want to have strings wound up. You want to have them uniform and tightly wound like this, and you want them to be a layers, you know, layers going down, and the bottom result is going to be the string that actually comes out onto your neck. So I hope that helps clarify that. And then I generally, I do kind of this maneuver. I don't know if you can see the way I'm holding my hand is I'm actually doing, I'm holding it with my forefinger down to hold tension. And then I'm just holding it up with my ring finger here just to keep tension so it doesn't pop out of the bridge. And then I'm just going to simply turn that. I want to be more than that. I do the standard typically. One of the bands I'm in, I play actually in flat. So I play in B flat or E flat, whatever you're, however you look at it. Um, but normally I tune to standard in, in my regular stuff. So that should be good. See, it lights up that it's, it lights up green when it shows you it's good. All right. So yeah, this is probably going to be a lot easier to play in the end. I'm wondering how this is going to be. Hopefully I won't need a truss rod adjustment because I think these strings are quite a bit lighter. So now I'm going to go ahead and go to the second string. Same principle, unwind it. Since, since this has a you know an open bridge like this where it just the string just kind of sits in there, I'm not so much going to worry about 
replacing that. I'm going to worry more about the tuning peg, but I still need to know how much slack I need. So again, I generally like to go from the nut and, you know, hold it here and I pull back two frets. So here it's at the nut and then I'm going to pull back two frets. So now I'm at the second fret marker and I'm going to go ahead and cut off that excess that I don't need. All right. Now, go ahead and do the same thing. Get the string down to put a kink in it right there. You know. tension on this. Now I'm going to put it through the bridge. Hold tension on it. Sorry, everything's a little bit shoddy here. I'm really not used to doing this with a couple of cameras in my face and trying to explain it this way. It's usually much easier when I'm just doing this. Generally, the new strings are gonna go in and out of tune a little bit. You're just gonna have to play it. And then I wouldn't record with brand new strings on it, like five minute old strings. You can, but generally speaking, I wouldn't restring a guitar like the morning you go into a studio. I would restring a guitar or a bass at least a couple of days before you go into a studio. I wouldn't change strings the day, you know, the day of a show. I would change strings like a few days before a show. Just that way you can give it time to kind of acclimate to the, to the instrument, especially if you do a string size change, because then you're going to run into some problems once everything kind of adjusts and that's something you definitely don't want and you don't want that surprise when you're getting ready to go on stage and you're like oh awesome so now moving on to the next one this one's going to be fun to do at an angle Yeah, I really love how Ibanez was thinking ahead. So. Circumcision. Yeah, the open bridge really makes things a lot easier. Since I'm starting to run out of a little more peg room, I'm actually going to do a little bit less on the next two strings. I'm probably going to do like maybe a fret and a half or a fret.
All right, now on to the next one. Yeah, I think they, I mean, I think they're slightly smaller. It's hard to tell, but I think they're slightly lighter gauge. But generally speaking, like, when you get used to it and you just, you know, you change your bass strings, it's going to take five or ten minutes. It doesn't take normally long. It's just taking me forever because I'm explaining everything. Just slowing it down to explain it. Oh, man. <laughs> that one really wedged itself into the nut. to do a comparison. I don't know. I mean, I guess it, yeah, slightly. I guess they're slightly, slightly larger than the, uh, the Black Beauties. given a little bit of resistance on the cutters but they're they're cutting fine I'm sure you can find this thing probably you know anywhere on the internet I don't even know what the brand name is on this thing it just says USA made I'm sure it is Wait, what is that so whatever that is Yeah, I mean, yeah, pretty good little tool. Again, just, you know, put it down in that little peg hole, bend it down, so that way it's that way, and then... Start it going. Trying to take my finger with it. Sometimes you have to get a little creative when you're tuning the low B. You have to do a harmonic. Went a little too far. Got a little too excited. they're gonna sound a little bit better because new strings always just sound really good they're gonna sound brighter you know they're gonna come through the mix a little more um, some people like the sound of dead strings because you know they want more of just um, a, they're not necessarily looking for the tonality of the attack on the bass itself they're looking for just the low resonant hum 
of the frequencies of the instrument in the mix. And, you know, and a lot of times people will put brand new strings on a bass, but they usually change a lot of the frequencies to make the sound or tone a little more dull. Uh, to, you know, some people do that, but some people just are like, oh, I like old bass string sound because, you know, they just like that kind of dull, you know, bass sound. It really is just all preference, but new strings always sound, in my opinion, new strings always sound good. Especially if you're playing with a pick. All right, so just another little piece of advice. You obviously don't have to heed my advice here, but just another thing, you know, as far as safety, because strings can come undone, flop around, and you don't want to get caught by strings, whether guitar, or bass, or whatever. So generally what I do, like I said, you don't have to take this advice, but I just take them all together, and I kind of just will generally wind them up. And uh, as one just whole mass, I um, tie them together, like so. And then Kind of stuff them into the packaging. I mean, you can wind them up individually and put them back in the things, but this, this way, you know, and then you just pack them back in, and that way you don't have to worry about, you know, just loose strings, and they're concentrated in one little area, and then you can just check the whole package, and eh, you're good to go, instead of, you know, worrying about stepping on one of these because you forgot to put it away properly. Stepping on guitar strings sucks. Stepping on bass strings, depending on if you're stepping on the sharp end of it or not, you know, maybe not as bad. Stepping on guitar strings sucks. So that's generally why I do that, so that I don't end up you know, cutting my feet open. So that's it. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, hit the notification bell, and that way you can always be up to date on any new video content that I release. And uh, really appreciate it. Thank you. All right, so that's it. It's that simple and straightforward. And I hope this was helpful and informative for anyone who might have been new to changing bass strings or just a refresher for anyone who might have wanted some pointers for anything. And uh, that's that's it. So this concludes our broadcast evening. Bye.